Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. We begin tonight with the immigration raids that have shaken the tri-state. Federal immigration agents arrested over 600 people nationwide, including dozens in the New York City area and at least five on Staten Island alone. This led to demonstrations and clashes between protesters and police over the weekend. Following the raids, President Trump posted on Twitter that, quote, the crackdown on illegal criminals is merely keeping of my campaign promise. Gang members, drug dealers and others are being removed. Mayor de Blasio responded by saying that, quote, we will continue to stand with the nearly 40 percent of New Yorkers who are foreign born, documented or undocumented. So what can we expect to happen next? And are these arrests just part of business as usual for immigration agents? Or is this a concentrated effort by the White House to round up illegal immigrants? Joining me now with answers is Michael Wilds, an immigration attorney and former federal prosecutor. Michael, welcome to the show. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. So as I said in the lead, um, these raids have gotten a lot of people um, feeling incredibly anxious and afraid. So I'm wondering if you could uh, characterize what's going on here. Sure. I mean, this seems like a rerun as if it were back to the future, the norm in the President Clinton or Bush uh, era, even senior President Bush. The president has expanded his priority list to include not just criminals, um, or abusers of public benefits, but people who entered through fraud or were accused of crimes. This expansion is unorthodox and truthfully beyond what the president had suggested that he would do, which is to rid us of gangsters and mobsters and drugsters and so forth. We see the government in recent days executing on not only warrants, but people within the realm. I heard from another immigration lawyer that he heard that there were people on the 7 train in the New York uh, City arena. This is a new normal. And the truth is that we may not be able to protect everyone. People with long rap sheets or adverse histories may actually have to leave. And the job of immigration lawyers are to protect their interests, to see that their remedies and relief is available. And if there is no option, to make sure that they are removed in a humane and just way. The times are certainly a changing. All right. So one of the things that I'm hearing from you, um, which might be problematic to begin with, is the fact that even the, what you're getting is a lot of rumor and innuendo. Can you tell me a little bit about the executive order that started all of this? The, there were two orders. One was an order, again, expanding the priority list. And mm -hmm. the more recent order was the one where the president made it clear that much. aliens from seven nations would not be welcome anymore. And there was no clarity. And it went up to the Circuit Court of Appeals because dual nationals or permanent residents were also included in this web. No doubt the president, I believe, in his heart is well intended to rid us of alien absconders or criminals. But he is far reaching beyond what the Constitution would allow and, and, and technically more than what uh, President Obama and other presidents have done in the past by getting and rounding people up who don't have war orders. Is this in retaliation to sanctuary cities because we see the mayor of New York and other mayors have laudably stood up to the president? I don't know. I know a few things. Number one. The president is keeping good on a promise that he made during his campaign, which is to ratchet up the removal of um, alien absconders and uh, criminals. Number two, he is in many ways creating a panic. Now, again, I'm a second generation immigration lawyer. Non-citizens should not panic. They should be looking to make sure that they are maintaining their status, not travel if they have any criminal issues. Now, this will fracture the American dream for many, and this will tear families apart. So it's important that people lawyer up properly and that at the same time they don't um, get too nervous. If uh, someone who is an immigrant, documented, undocumented, is appro approached by um, an immigration agent, do they have any rights? What should they do? Right. So the circumstances is very different depending if there's a warrant that's there. Um, if anybody is represented by a lawyer, they shouldn't make any claim and they should ask to speak to their lawyer. An agent has the right to, to dispel some of their protections, constitutional protections, if they believe that they're in harm's way and they have the right to pat you down and to look for a weapon. But any comments or statements that you make could be used against you. One thing should be said is the president is now, by this serious move in the last week, going to overwhelm the immigration courts and the docket 
I don't see any move in Congress for him to get more money for more immigration judges. No doubt a lot of these individuals will have remedies. They will have committed bad acts, but they may have greater acts that would allow them to mitigate those circumstances and remain on U.S. soil. Has our president approached Congress? We have only about 300 immigration judges with 11 million people here. The president has sworn that he's going to get rid of at least 3 million of the, of the serious violent offenders. What has he done to set this up? What has he done to roll this out? And as, if it's not as professionally done as the executive order was, um, what, where are we then in a few years from now? Have we then created another burden on yet taxpayers and at the same time destroyed the fragment and fractured families? All right. Well, listen, uh, Michael Wilds, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and explain a little bit about what's going on and, of course, um, what we should look for going forward. Pleasure. Thank you. Mayor Bill de Blasio will...